Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Uh, today what I want to do is I want to go back to the ring and chain experiment. I previously did this video where I play a little trick on my son and won some money. And we had a lot of fun doing it. I then kind of showed you uh, the ring falling through this chain and then kind of getting connected the way I have it shown over here. Um, but I didn't really explain the physics as to why it happened. So in this video, we're going to kind of go back and look at the video in more detail. And then I'll kind of try to explain it in the most basic terms that I can. Okay, so let's go back and uh, look at what we saw last time. So for step one, which is actually really critically important, is the way you hold the ring. Okay, so I'm holding the ring here between my thumb and my finger. And actually the chain goes here in the front and also in the back. And my fingers are on the sides. Okay, so this is actually really important uh, for you to be successful. Okay, so fingers and thumbs on the sides and the chain is in the front and the back the way you see it here. Uh, so right now the... Uh, chain or sorry the ring is in equilibrium so if you did a free body diagram on this ring uh, you'd probably have three forces and here i'm going to neglect any force between the chain and the ring but this would be it there's my thumb holding it on this side and there's my finger holding it on the other side so we have two forces acting up and then i have the weight of the ring the weight of the ring acts at the center of mass of the ring so it's right at the center and it has a magnitude mg and you know if it's not moving then all those forces have to be equal to zero if i would add them up as vectors all right, so that's step number one. All right, so here's step two. Step two is I'm going to remove my fingers. Okay, so what we have to do then from the free body diagram, we actually have to remove this force. All right, we know this is the ring. I don't need this anymore. And if I do that, well, guess what happens now? We no longer have the sum of the forces equals to zero right? Because we have that the weight is bigger than this force. Because in the previous case, uh, we had that all the forces were equal, right? We had an, an additional force holding it up. So now what we have is that the weight is bigger than uh, the force of the thumb acting on the ring. Okay, so what that means is it's going to accelerate downwards, okay? Because we have this force in balance, we're going to have an acceleration of the center of mass down because we have a net force acting down. Okay, so that's Newton's second law. Now the other thing that's really important here is that this is initially still in contact with uh, my thumb, this point. And you can see it over here in the picture. It's getting a little bit blurry because the picture can't capture it. But what you can see here is that the plane of this ring here starts to rotate okay we get some rotation and the reason that you get some rotation well imagine if this here is a, a pivot point okay and right now the weight is acting a certain distance away from the pivot right and that means if you have a force acting a certain distance from the pivot not only do i have a net force but i will also have a net torque okay there will be a net torque which is not equal to zero anymore so that means two things. If you think about Newton's second law for rotation, uh, if I add up all of the torque acting on the system, that should be equal to the moment of inertia about this point multiplied by the angular acceleration. Okay, so you're going to get some rotation. If you wanted to, you can also write this in terms of angular momentum. You will also have a change of angular momentum with respect to time. Okay, kind of two ways of looking at the same thing. But once you remove this force on this side, uh, you do have a net torque, okay? Because the weight will produce a torque acting on the ring about this pivot point. It's going to start to rotate. If you go back to the video now, you'll notice that the second that my thumb gets released, you'll see that the ring will start to fall and it will also start to rotate. And that rotation is really, really important for this experiment. The next phase over here is during the rotation, right? So I've removed my thumb, it starts to rotate, okay? And this rotation is going to continue until it hits the chain. Once it hits the chain, it's going to start to slow down its rotation because we're going to have a torque acting in the opposite direction of the rotation or the angular momentum. So that's going to cause a change in the rotation or change in angular momentum, okay? but it's actually gonna end up overshooting a little bit, okay? 
It's gonna end up overshooting a little bit to make an angle past the vertical direction. It actually doesn't drop straight down. It will actually strike a little bit more and it takes a while for it to slow down that rotation. Okay, and as a result, you end up going a little bit beyond the vertical direction. You can see that clearly in the video. All right, so to illustrate this, I can actually do this in a two dimension here. So we start off with the ring in this configuration. And then when I uh, remove my thumb or my fingers, the ring rotated, right? And it starts to drop. Okay, so eventually it's almost flat, but it's not quite flat because this side of the ring has over rotated a little bit. So it pops up a little bit. And this will keep on kind of sliding down. And what you can see what the chain does over here, right? The chain is kind of wrapping itself around the ring. And that's going to keep on happening. The ring is falling faster and faster, okay? And this chain will actually keep going up on the edges of the ring like this. Okay, eventually you're right near the bottom now, and this is kind of the last critical step. Again, this portion of the ring is kind of over rotated a little bit. It hasn't rotated back. And now the last step here is just this ring kind of with quite a lot of velocity, just shooting through this hole here. And if it does that kind of quickly, boom, at the end you get the last step where everything gets connected. If you flip it over, you can see that's kind of how it looks on the other side.